In the former clip we derived the rotation matrix in a geometric way for the transformation that we associate with the rotation. Well here we will prove the theorem that rotation pres preserve, preserves length. So take a rotation over an angle phi counterclockwise so that here we see the rotation matrix times x here's the rotation matrix r phi then if we look at the length of the rotated vector r phi x squared it's more useful to, to take a square term because we get rid of the square root. So this is no more than the inner product or the dot product of r phi x with itself. So we, now we write it in coordinates. So we have the first coordinate, cosine is phi times x1 minus sinus phi x2 squared and the second coordinate is the sinus of phi x1 plus the cosinus phi of x2 squared. So we continue by grouping several elements. So Here we get the cosine is phi times x1 squared minus 2 times the cross product times the sine is phi, uh, uh, sinus phi squared times x2 plus uh, the sine is phi squared x1 squared plus 2 times the cross term 2x1 x2 cosine is sine is phi plus x2 cosine squared phi. So we see that the terms related to x2 squared and x1 squared have the term sinus squared phi and the cosine squared phi. But these add up to 1. So what we obtain here is that we actually get x1 squared plus if you take this term here, they cancel because here's a minus sign, there's a plus sign. So we get a 0 plus x2 squared is actually the inner product of x with itself which equals the norm of x, x squared or the length of x. So actually what we've shown is that the length of the rotated vector, vector x equals the length of x. Okay, another property is that rotation preserves orthogonality. So actually rotation, more in general, if two vectors make some angle phi, they will keep the same angle phi if they are rotated over the same angle. Well, we prove here that rotation preserves orthogonality. So assume that we have two vectors in the R2 and that x is perpendicular to y or orthogonal to y. Well, we calculate the inner product of the rotated vector x and the rotated vector y. So proving that they are orthogonal means that this inner product should deliver zero. Okay, what do we have here? So here is the first component, is the rotated vector x written down in coordinates. And similarly, here we can write the vector y rotated over an angle phi. So we just multiply the vector y with the rotation matrix r phi, which gives this expression. And now we form the inner product, 
So we get x1 cosine is phi minus x2 sine is phi times y1 cosine is phi minus y2 sine is phi. That's due to multiplication of the first coordinates with each other. And now we add the second coordinates multiplied. So we get x1 sinus phi plus x2 cosinus phi times y1 sinus phi plus y2 cosinus phi, which is the expression over here. So we're gonna again gonna simplify these terms. We're gonna work out the expressions here. So we get x1 cosinus phi times y1 cosinus phi is x1 y1 cosine squared. And we get y2 x2 sinus phi squared. Minus x1 y2 plus x2 y1 sinus phi cosinus phi. That's the first part. Now we're going to work out this expression here. We get x1 sinus phi plus y1 sinus phi, so x1 y1 sinus squared phi, plus x2 y2 cosinus phi squared, plus y1 sinus phi times x2 cosinus phi. So this gives y, x1, y2, plus x2, y1, sinus phi, cosinus phi. So these two terms cancel. And here we get the cosinus squared and sinus squared. So it gives, this leads to 1. Over here we get the squared terms as well. So we get again 1, so we obtain here x1, y1 plus x2 and y2 equals the inner product of x and y and x and y are assumed to be orthogonal, so the inner product equals 0. So this is just exactly what we needed to prove here.